I'm Chef Johnny Chow. Welcome to the Exotic Cuisine. Fusion cuisine. Well, fusion cuisine, it is a combined with a traditional cooking of two different countries where the ingredients and the cooking method combine together, but they have to blend well and marry it well in the ingredient. When you say marry it well, what do you mean? For example, the Kalaloo, you cannot add a Chinese lap chong or Chinese sausage in it. It will be very inethical. That is not fusion. Wow. Okay, what else? Well, like a char siu kai fan, if you put what we call the sweet sauce from doubles, it don't work. It, it, it tastes different. Okay, what again? Well, like a pizza. You cannot put a salt pigtail on a pizza. It won't taste good and too trouble to eat. I see. But tell me something. Why a pizza is circle? It's wrong. A circle. They place it in a square box and they cut it in quarters, in triangle. They eat it in slices in triangle. Why? That is part of the fusion food. All right, so let's look at Chef Johnny in the exotic cuisine and find out more about fusion food. Hi folks, this is the Passat Food King supermarket in Princess Town. This is where I do my shopping. They have everything, exactly what you need because I do shop here. Hi folks, uh, Chef John here again and I just want to explain a little bit about the oyster sauce here. In every supermarket, they already have supermarket available and um, do you know the oyster sauce story? It is a man called Lee Kam in the year of 1888 where he had a tea shop in Hong Kong. Actually, he was cooking a stew of oyster to sell for the customers. However, he forget the fire on and he walked away. And when he come back, luckily, the oyster was not burned, but it's draw down a lot of water, it boiled down. So what happened now is it become a very rich, thick sauce. So what he do is I take off the fire, let it cool off, he taste it, and he discover its most remarkable flavor he ever tasted. And that is the bone of the oyster sauce, that's how he discovered. But right now, it is a $17 billion industry annually. Right now, we have all over the, the country, in the world, they have oyster sauce uh, uh, production. Now, for example, we have many brands here. This is the, what we call the uh, Chinese Shandai, whatever brand, it does not matter. But they all carry a different flavor due to the, what we call the formula. Now, this is the original brand, what we call the old brand in Lee Kam Ki. Their flavor is the most intensive. Any other brand, it just not come close to it. That's why it sell more. And right now, even we have more convenient size of oyster sauce. And it was just right for all the household. Good for stir fry sauces, etc. So remember, the bird of oyster sauce, it came from Hong Kong. Hi folks, here we go again. Tomato ketchup. Actually, you know, everybody know about the ketchup. Who don't know ketchups? And actually ketchup is one of the best condiments also the cooking ingredients for marvelous food. Actually, um, tomato sauce in Trinidad manufactured since 1959. It's come from the Mark Tooks family. And they're the first one who create the tomato sauce. And um, the rest is history. Do you know, actually, tomato sauce actually way back in China, more than a couple hundred years, already exists before we know about the pizza. Um, due to, you know, in the days when the Chinese or the, the foreigners, they see tomato, the, a bright red, they thought it was poison or toxic. Uh, believe it or not, the green tomato is toxic. What you have to do is uh, cook it until the toxic die out. And eventually, you know, the Chinese have the uh, tomato 
they more cook with stew or maybe to sauces like the shao ha look for the shrimp tomato sauce. But very tasty. That menu we don't see much often again in Trinidad. However, um, you know in tomato sauce or tomato paste, it is used all over in Europe or the North and South America. Even though the worldwide actually, in most of the what we call the Western uh, restaurants, they must have a bottle of ketchup and a bottle of Rochester sauce together where they use as a regular condiment. So remember, the ketchup, it is as an excellent condiment. I know. Hi folks, welcome to the Exotic Cuisine. Today we are doing two dishes. The first one is what we call the Christmas fire rice because the Christmas at the atmosphere already. So here what to do, come right back. I will show you how to do it. Feliz Navidad. Hi, welcome back. Here we're gonna do the Christmas rice, very easy. What happened is that Christmas, fried rice is everybody gonna do it, whether Asian or East Indian or the Creole, everybody know how to do a rice. But this one now is a little twist. The ingredients are diced carrot, diced onion, diced green pepper, diced turkey. Uh, you know, this is what we call the, the sweet fruits for the uh, fruit cakes, okay? And then we have butter, we have salt, we have rice. That's all we need, but let's do it together, okay? First thing is to start the heat. Right, make sure the rice... The... Now, remember I told you in the past, right? Um, to create a Teflon effect is that make sure your wok or pot hot first before you start any put any oil or butter. Otherwise, you know, the pot will stick endlessly. Now, in this case now, since the butter cannot take high heat, it will burn very quickly. So in the meantime, when I stir fry the other ingredients with a little bit of what they call the cooking oil. Okay? What kind of oil? Just oil. Put the oil in the coil. Oh no, in the wok. Let's go. Put a little bit here. Nice. You see? Start to smoke up already. If it's a butter, already burned. So what you're going to do is that you create a Teflon by just swirling it around. Beautiful. Very hot, but very nice. Alright, so let's have to put some onion. Followed by carrot. Alright, nice. Mmm, smell very good, the fragrance, trust me. I put the chicken or turkey, but this time we have turkey. Now, sweet pepper is a way to eat it green or raw. But this one now is that the candy here is made out of papaya. So I want it soft a little bit. We must have the what we call the heat. Let's take some heat. Now at this time now, you could add what we call the butter because we want the, the flavor. Oh, well, let's put all, because we have a good bit of rice here. At the same time now, the butter will give you a very, very, very good flavor. Okay. Now the green pepper, we're gonna leave it there, we're gonna put it at the, almost to the end. Mmm, this is good. This smells amazing. Now let's put the rice and Let's do it. Break it up, all the lumps, and twist it. Now, fire rice is funny. Um, when you do fire rice, it's the best to use what we call leftover rice from yesterday or last night. And the rice texture actually is easier to fry because once you cook the fresh white rice or the jasmine rice or basmati rice, the, the starch in, in it is very difficult to give you a good fried rice. You get a lot of lumps, yeah? And over the night, the lumps, the starch tends to die down. Okay, now beautiful. What we're gonna do now is I put a pinch of salt. 
a little bit of it. Uh, I have some chicken powder. Let's put some chicken powder. And a little bit what we call the, the white pepper. I like white pepper. Oh, yes. Sometimes, you know, white pepper. Sometimes it's black pepper. But when it comes to cook food, it depends on which type. There we go. Now, make sure, you know, when the rice starts to get hot, the lumps will break up very easily. Now, here we go. Let's sweep down. Add the green pepper. And this time now, is all you do is that make sure all the lumps, most important is the lumps. When you say lumps, that is not Mr. Lump. All right. Okay. Now, fried rice, what I want you to do is that not just mix the rice and then cut it done. That rice is fry. Make sure the rice has proper temperature. You see how much smoke come from this? Now you start to talk about fried rice. Now frying. Before it was mixing. So a lot of people, well, tend to be confused between fried rice and mixed rice. Right now the rice is frying. Earlier I was mixing. You know what? It would give you a different flavor. Oh, one thing though, it's very pretty. Now let's go, let's get a, a platter. And get this off. Oh, yes. There we go. So simple. Remember, in the exotic cuisine, I will show you very easy steps to make good food at home. And look how beautiful the color is. At the same time, what you do is that use a parsley. Put it not 60, 12. I want it 11 and 5. All right, this is what we're talking about. So don't go away. I'll be right back after these messages. Hi folks, welcome back. Now, this segment we're gonna do now, it is that this dish we're gonna do is a call it the sausage pilori. Now, pilori is good, you know, with a dip, you know, the mango dip, sweet sauce. But what happened it is that sometimes it could be creative to have a bite inside it. Now, in this case now, it's interchangeable. You could use chicken, you could use beef or pork, whatever sausage come available. But right now, I use salami, beef salami, okay? Now, here we go. To make the sausage polari, first, I want to make the sauce first. Sauce is the most essential one. Now, the ratio of the sauce now, it is that they could right here in front of you. They have what we call is that three tablespoons of vinegar. Okay, four tablespoons of sugar. Uh, we have some ketchup here. Ketchup is just as a, what we call is an add a flavor and a color. It's good. Pinch of salt. But the most beautiful one, it is that what we call the pepper sauce. You know, Trina, we have a very, very lovely pepper sauce. This is called the crushed lemon pepper. I love it. This will give you what we call the zest. Some people call it the kick. <laughs> Well, with a side kick or front kick that you have to describe it. And we'll add a little soy sauce to what we call the give a color. So here we go. Let's make this sauce together. Now, first put on the heat. Okay, and then we add the vinegar. This is around three tablespoons. The sugar here, around four tablespoons. A pinch of salt. Now you can load down the heat. Because what you need is that some water. What kind of water? Just water. Nice. This water actually it gives what we call now raised by the heat. It dilute down between the acidic and the uh, the sweet flavor. Okay. Now, as you see, it's starting to melt already. 
Let's put the, the ketchup. What kind of ketchup? Just ketchup. All right, so here we go. Put the ketchup. Now, in this process now, is what we do is that we're making the sauce first, and we could fry the sausage, pull our a little after. Add a little bit what we call chicken powder. We give you a, a better in kicking. What kind of kick? Fun kick. A little soy sauce, dark soy sauce. Locally, we have good brands. Okay? That give you a nice color. It's not too boring. Okay? At the same time, now what you're going to do is that we're going to a team a little bit what we call the um, starch solution. Right? Tapioca starch or corn starch. In the meantime, we're going to get some water. What kind of water? Just water. There we go. After the water is here, then we add into the sauce with this water. The starch solution. This will give you a little thickening. But in the meantime, make sure when you start to put, put in, you have to do it in a very swift motion because you don't want no lumps or lumpies, okay? Now, in the meantime, let's go for the, the kick. Now, you know, in Trinidad, we all like spicy food, right? This pepper sauce is very strong. I like it. Put one and a half tablespoon. And let us spin it again. This is not all yet. We have something further. I want to add a little more what we call butter. Funny enough, when you add butter into a sweet and sour, a dip like this one, with a little spice, like what we just placed in, the concept, it improves. I would like to say that you say change or entirely. That is wrong. I think this improves the flavor and they make it more interesting. It's more palatable. Okay, in the meantime, let's have the sauce pour it into a bowl. This is the dip. Trust me, this dip, it would help you dip after you have this dip. Okay, so don't go away. Let's start with the frying. Hey folks, welcome back. Let's try to fry this polori. I know polori is a very popular household item, especially down in Debe. It's abundant of the polori. But you know, just put a little bit of the, if you check, the sauce is Chinese, Asian. The butter of this polori, it is, let me touch the heat first, huh? The heat. Okay, one drop inside, see how it react. Not yet. Oh, yes. But have to add a little more heat. Okay, here how it works. Salami is Italian. East Indian. And then the Asian, Chinese. So you right now, you have what we call the Asian, Asian, Italian fusion food. What you do is that leave the toothpicks inside and you rest it down. Beautiful! That is the way to do it. You leave it too big. So what happens is when it finish frying now, it is that you have something to hold on to the polori. Yeah? Beautiful. Rest it down. Nice. Oh, this one is good. You know what? On a Sunday or maybe on a uh, any special holidays, you know, get friends, friends and family get together. This will be the ideal snacks. You know, between meals, this is a nice snack, nice snacks. Why chit chat, you know, with each other? That would be a very excellent items. Oh, look how beautiful this bubbling up. That is the way. That's the way. Aha, aha. I like it. Aha, aha. That's the way. It's beauty. If you check. You know, in food, besides, you know, good to eat for energies and for life sustain, but actually food is a beautiful thing. If you look at it in that 
way. Yeah? It's a beautiful thing. That's why you see some of the dishes I do, you see actually before you eat it, you could even enjoy it by looking it, look into it. Oh yes. Look at beautiful brown. Now that means it is already about time to remove from the pot. It's very easy and it's a very beautiful snack for the whole family and friends. Okay, make sure we're gonna drain off a little bit. Let's pick up the heat. Or we'll paper put it by the paper towel. Nice. At the same time, what we're going to do is that place it right in this platter here. Oh, I like it how it look. You know what? Every one of them already stick up like a lollipop. That's the way, aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. You see, when you're cooking, you have to enjoy what you're doing. You put love into it. And that's good energy. Oh, look at this one. I like it. This is outstanding. It's different. There you go. So, don't go away. I'll be right back after these messages. Hi, folks. Here we go. We, since the Christmas has gone through, not too long, but gone by, and this Christmas rice just come just the after Christmas period. It's perfectly timing. And what I want you to do is to try it home and keep the recipe maybe for every other Christmas or for every Christmas that you have time. Now, this polari, it is interesting. It's actually, it's a combination of Italian, Asian, Chinese, Chinese, and then the East Indian. So it is a three country, cuisine in one okay and um, in China we don't celebrate Christmas as much you know we don't have Christmas food but however this one it is a way it is that the more Trini style okay and the butter the buttery flavor mmm mmm okay so remember to join me every week the exotic cuisine I am chef Johnny Chow see you soon mm -hmm.